welcome and uh, thank you for honoring us with your presence in this uh, reception we are holding this morning. For you to know who the laureates are, it will be uh, much easier if I call them and present them and they will stand here and then later on you can approach them and uh, talk to them. So I would like to call uh, Professor Aya Verschel, please. <laughs> now we have a tiny problem with uh, Professor Verschel, he lost his voice. <laughs> so whoever is with us, okay with the sign language is all this type of uh, communication, very welcome to try it. <laughs> Professor Michael Levitt, please. Then we have, we have also a special guest of honor that came heading a um, delegation uh, from his ministry, the Minister of Communications of the State of Israel, Minister Gilad Adan. He's here and he's honoring us with his presence. We are very happy to have you, Minister uh, Gilad Adan. Um, Gilad Adan is a young minister, but uh, with a prominent uh, career. Uh, Minister of Environment uh, previously, and uh, very near to the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Minister, Minister Gilad Adan, Minister Brigitte Olson, thank you for honoring us with your presence. Excellencies, friends, members of the Jewish community, scientists, Thank you for being with us this morning. It is a great honor indeed for all of us to welcome you here today in this beautiful and historic hall, the Sessions Hall of the Jewish Community of Stockholm. Many of the portraits you can see on the walls uh, depict outstanding Jewish scholars of generations past. It is a source of intense pride to us, Israelis, that the ages old Jewish love for, the learn for learning as represented in the mo uh, most cutting edge modern branches of science through your invaluable contributions, dear Michael and Aya, once again has received the recognition of the whole scientific world. Many of you might already know that to date, Israel, with only 65 years of existence in the modern era, has had an impressive 12 Nobel Prize laureates and many more laureates have been associated with Israel in their research. Indeed, in the, new, in the few years which have passed during this current uh, century only, we have had eight laureates and hopefully more is to come. Of course, I will uh, gladly acknowledge the crucial um, role played by the United States where you, uh, Michael and I, uh, uh, reside today in your scientific careers for Israelis, um, um, especially scientists, of course, to do so well, however, in any, uh, in an arena where all the best minds of the world are uh, competing is an admirable achievement. Israel is the world leader in research publications per capita, in number of doctorates per capita, and coming second place internationally for the number of universities, um, university graduates. With no natural resources to rely upon, except for the human capital of its uh, citizens, Israel has turned to innovation in a number of cutting edge fields of science and technology, such as IT and biomed, as the very motto of its economic drive. Israel is at the very top of the chart for so-called startups in the whole world. There are more of them in Israel than in the EU member states altogether. And actually, more Israeli companies have been introduced on the New York Stock Exchange than from the whole of the European Union combined. We are very happy and pleased that the Swedish government recently has, a uh, has pointed uh, to Israel as a, uh, pro as a priority market. Indeed, as uh, illustrated by many high-level delegations over the last few years, Israel and Sweden have much in common 
and an intensive mutual exchange in the science and startups entrepreneurship, inter, inter, entrepreneurship and uh, innovation is taking place. Israel is the largest immigrant absorbing nation in the world relative to its size. In this sense too, Sweden and Israel have a lot in common. Great diversity in both our cases is a vital key to success and development in so many fields. Indeed, the life stories of our esteemed laureates reflect the success and vitality of Israel as an immigration nation. President Shimon Peres, in an interview for, the, for his recent 90, 90th birthday, said the following. If you ask me what the Jewish people's uh, greatest contribution is to the world, my answer is discontentment. Because then, you went on, you create, you try to create, and to change things. Uh, this business of uh, constructive and um, creative discontent is very much an Israeli trait, I believe. I am sure that also you, Michael and Arye, have been driven by this urge to always excel and go a step farther. And here, are, and, and here you are, having been awarded the highest distinction there is in the world of research and science. Even with this state of mind of constructive discontent, however, there are indeed days when one must allow um, oneself to be satisfied and pleased with what one has achieved. In your case, dear Michael and Arya, it is truly the day to be content, pleased, and very satisfied. We in Israel admire and appreciate um, your achievement, and I know that I speak um, in the name of uh, all Israelis when I say that uh, this makes us all immensely proud. Mazal tov and best of luck in all your future endeavors. Thank you. I would like to ask uh, Mr. Gilad Adan to uh, deliver his uh, message. Minister uh, Birgitta Olson, His Excellency Ambassador uh, Yitzhak uh, Bachman, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and of course, distinguished, distinguished Nobel Prize laureates in chemistry for 2013, Professor Ari Varshel and Professor Michael Levitt. I have no words to express my pride standing here at this event in honor of Professor Varshel and Professor Levitt. I'm happy and proud as an Israeli citizen and minister to see once again <clears throat> citizens of our small country win the world's most precious recognition of human achievement. I have to admit that I don't know anything about <laughs> the development of multi-scale models for complex chemical systems. As a, you know, as an Israeli minister, it's an achievement that I can say. It. <laughs> but I do know that after 12 Israeli laureates with, between uh, 1966 and 2013, it may perhaps require some sort of a multi-scale model to answer the complex question of how, how such a small nation keeps climbing, climbing and successfully gets again and again to the highest mountain tops of human knowledge and expertise. So, Professor Varshel, Professor Levitt, of course, I know that this moment in your lives is first and foremost a very personal achievement, marking a peak in your lifelong career of uncompromising scientific quest, which I am sure has also been full of uh, sacrifice, and I met your families uh, here. <laughs> they know about the sacrifice. I, I'm, <laughs> as a politician, my wife also sacrificed, but... I congratulate you for that from the bottom of my heart and uh, feel pri privileged uh, to be here with you in your most personal and much deserved happiness. And at the same time, 
I hope you allow me to also say that your huge achievement is also an honor for all, all of us, the Israelis, as, as that achievement highlights the absolute excellence of Israeli research institutes, such as the Weizmann Institute, which, which has been a significant milestone in your careers. I also allow myself at this opportunity here at the Jewish Community Center in this very important European capital, which is home of the Nobel Foundation and one of the most important landmarks of the technological revolution of our age, to say that this occasion is yet another proof for the important role that Israel has been holding and will continue to hold, hold in the world's community of scientific as well as technological research. And more particularly, it is important for me to declare here how significant it is for both Israel and the European Union that Israel has recently signed the Horizon 2020 Scientific Cooperation Program. Shh. <laughs> it's like in Israel, but it's true. I'm very glad for that. I believe that science must, in any case, be left out of any political differences between friends. And I'm happy that Israel and the European Union have found a way to overcome differences in order to pave the way and to continue with our ongoing scientific cooperation, which has always benefited both, both sides and the world at large. Standing here at the heart of Sweden, there are a couple of more things that I find important to say about the relations between Sweden and Israel. First of all, and I'll be short, I have already mentioned, because you're standing, of course, I have already mentioned technological R&D, and of course, as a Minister of Communications from a country which itself is known as a startup nation and as a breeding place for innovators, I would like to say how I admire Sweden and the Swedish people who, as a big underst understatement, have played a key part in developing the wonder of mobile communications, which we all enjoy today. In fact, I'm here now with a delegation of regulators from Israel, from my ministry and other governmental ministries who have come here to Sweden to learn about how mobile 4G has so successfully been introduced to the Swedish market. Using the concept of network sharing, which we hope to implement in Israel as well. And let me assure you that it is far from being the first time that Israelis are learning from Sweden about best practices in mobile telecommunications. So I want to use this opportunity to thank all our Swedish colleagues who so willfully and kindly host and assist us. And another thing, the last thing, I wanted to say about Sweden relates to my former ministerial responsibility as the Minister of Environmental Protection. I learned back then that Sweden is also a leading nation in this field as well. And my desire then, as an environmental minister, was to succeed to make Israel adopt some of Sweden's, Sweden's practices in, the field, in that field as well. It still remains my desire today, as I believe that environmental protection is crucial to human survival on this planet. There is much scientific research in Israel in this field as well, and much room for cooperation with the European Union. Which, of course, brings us back to chemistry. Professor Levit, Professor Varshel, from myself, from the State of Israel, from all of us, congratulations, Mazal Tov, Bekol HaKavod. I'm happy to invite, at long last, to listen to the heroes of this morning. Uh, represented only by Professor Levitt. Unfortunately, Professor Marshall, though he had the intention to speak, he lost his voice, and uh, we'll hear the message of both through Professor Levitt. Professor Levitt, please. Speak spontaneously. 
Um, Aria can't speak, but unfortunately he can still hear, so I have to... <laughs> um, I did want to say that uh, this prize is, is from all three members who won the chemistry prize, very, very much an Israeli prize. It started with a man, Schneer Lipson, a Butznik, who actually got his PhD rather late in life, who was uh, the head of the scientific Scientific Committee at the Weizmann Institute. Aria noticed him then. I was sent to work with Schnell in 1967 when I was just 20 years old by the leading British scientist at the time, Sir John Kendrew. Schnell, I think, uh, ended up being the person, well, I, he definitely was the person who stimulated Aria and myself, as well as Martin Carpus of Harvard. This is essentially his single handed idea. If it was delete Schnell Lipson, this would not have happened. Unfortunately, Lifson passed away 11 years ago. I think he is probably the finest Israeli scientist. Not everyone in Israel would agree with this. He unfortunately got into the Israeli Academy at the age of 80, uh, which is a disgrace. And uh, I have to say this, unfortunately, they won't be happy, but truth needs to be spoken. And uh, really was the person who started this all off. Uh, he also founded the Open University as a sideline. Really remarkable scientist. He wasn't a good politician. And I think that while I'm a great believer in politics, I think in the same way that politics doesn't have any place in sport, it has no place in science. And I don't mean politics in terms of a 2020 vision agreement. Politics at an institute about who gets tenure and who doesn't get tenure should be decided strictly on merit and not in politics. And one thing that the Nobel committees have done is work very, very hard to award the, work, the prize based on published work on originality, on priority, and not on who makes the largest sound. I, one of my interviews with Rich Stein in Israel was with Ben Mittelman, who's actually a sports interviewer. And I said to him, imagine that the person who won the swimming championship wasn't the best swimmer, but the one who had the best PR, the best electoral campaign, etc. It would be a disgrace if we have really bad swimmers. I think science needs to be free of politics, and this, I think, is an area where more could be done. Um, I would also say that while one is rightly proud of the fact that there are 12 Israeli Nobel Prize winners, I think you normalize this not by population, but by Jewish population, it's quite low. <laughs> one, of my, one of my friends who's a Nobel Prize winner is often asked, on his, he's, he got the prize seven years ago, so he's more experienced, he's often asked when he visits Korea and China, how come 30% of the Nobel Prize winners are Jewish? And he says, because of anti-Semitism, otherwise it would have been 70%. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I think, uh, it's this I do want to take this opportunity on behalf of both Ari and myself to thank our, our spouses. Uh, it is really, really hard to be married to a scientist because a scientist is actually married to his work. <laughs> and uh, if the work is on a computer, it is next to you all the time. Even, it's even worth it to just think it. I mean, Ari and I would be thinking about our work and say hi and stuff like this with half a mind. And I think that we are both lucky, extremely lucky that we still have wives, we still have the same wives <laughs> that back with us for a very, very long time. <laughs> and that is something for which we have to be truly grateful because I think that one of the greatest dangers of somebody who is very, very passionate about their work is there's a real danger of overworking. People, don't, people often think you don't work hard enough. Working too hard is a really bad idea. And when you have young children and a family, you can try to work too hard, but it's really, really hard. So I think this is a, another really important thing. Finally, I think that uh, the Swedes have the most amazingly gracious sense of hospitality. They are only outdone by Ambassador Bachman. This is now our fourth meeting in as many days. In fact, I think it's the fourth meeting in three days, or maybe four days. And I think that uh, I now know most of the Swedish community, the Jewish community in Sweden, and I think it's a spectacular community. I feel very much at home here, and thank you all very much on behalf of Ari and myself. I saw that Professor Herschel wrote something. Is there any message? Uh, to my wife. Okay, fine. You want who? Please. Yael Herschel. 
the daughter of Professor Virgil has a message on his him theirs behalf. Thank you. I'm gonna hope I can channel him properly. Um, when my father discusses his work, one important thing is the QMM process, which I'm not going to get into because I'm not a scientist. Um, but something that I always suggest to him that's worth adding for the majority of people who are not scientists is to explain the worth of the application of the work that they pioneered. Um, namely, that it holds the possibility to speed up the production of drugs that can combat diseases like HIV, cancer, malaria, you name it. And I think that's really important for those of us who are lay people to understand that the computer simulation processes allow you to model uh, simulations in such a way that take as much, it could take as much as, um, cut off as much as 25 years from the amount of time that it would take in a wet lab to construct those processes. So it's very important to understand what they've done, the power that it holds for science for all of us. So that is what I want to add. I hope I've channeled him properly um, for the lay people. Thank you. I've been approached by many of you asking me, who are the laureates? Now you know who they are. <laughs> and um, you can approach them and uh, salute them. I know that many wanted to shake your hands, maybe take a photo. Uh, so please. Dangerous cold, okay, there's a dangerous cold, so you take a risk by shaking hands, okay? But just a just second, there's an additional thing. Okay, thank you.